Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I hope your week is continuing to go well. It's now Thursday. We're almost to the end. Tomorrow's Friday. Hooray. Um, I am excited to, once again, bring you another um, interview, a different kind of interview again. Last week I had my first nonfiction book, and today I have another nonfiction book interview, and that is with Karen L. Christensen, who is the author of Co-Parenting from the Inside Out, Voices of Moms and Dads. She actually contacted me about the Relationship Podcast, and so this interview was aired on the Relationship Podcast earlier in the week, but of course, because it is a book, I like to put those on this podcast as well, because I am trying to give you as a diverse a variety of genres as possible, and because this topic is so very important. Because unfortunately, there are, you know, numerous divorces and breakups happening in our world on a daily basis. And many of those divorces and breakups involve children. So figuring out how you are going to move forward parenting those children is a huge decision, not only for you and your partner, but for those children as well. And you're in the midst of this emotional upheaval, maybe traumatic experience, no matter how civil or amicable a divorce or a breakup might be, it's still going to be emotionally trying. So it's it's important to make these decisions as rationally as possible, which can be very difficult under the circumstances. And so I I really appreciate that Karen wrote this book. Um, she herself got a divorce um, about, I think, 25 years ago, she said, and she and her husband, her ex-husband, excuse me, decided to co-parent their two young boys. And she said at the time, there wasn't that much information about co-parenting. And she'll talk more about that story and more about what her definition of co-parenting is when we get to that interview. But she just really wanted to hear other people's stories and how they figured out what co-parenting would look like for their family. And since she couldn't really find that out there, she decided to write the book that she was wanting to read. So the book uh, has Karen's perspectives, but it also has interviews with several, I think there's um, 28 moms and 14 dads who with their partners made the decision to co-parent after they broke up and how that worked for them, what it looked like for them, the obstacles that they faced, the mistakes that they made, the successes that they had, how they worked through all of that. So let me just give you the the brief blurb from the co-parenting from the Inside Out book and that is as follows. Divorce impacts over 2 million children under 18 every year in North America. Co-parenting, or shared parenting, is increasingly common, yet many couples are ill-equipped to deal with the challenges inherent in raising children under shared arrangements. Co-parenting requires empathy, patience, and open communication, three things that are often challenges for couples who've encountered marital issues. Co-Parenting from the Inside Out, Voices of Moms and Dads, is the book parents need to help them navigate the rocky landscape of shared custody and shared responsibility for raising children in any co-parenting situation. Certified life coach and co-parenting expert Karen Christensen has brought together real-life co-parenting stories to inspire separated parents and help them understand co-parenting better, offering practical tips and tools that directly benefit families. So again, that is the uh, description of Co-Parenting from the Inside Out by Karen L. Christensen. And without further ado from me, I think we will get to that interview. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. How are you today? 
I am very well, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. So we are here to talk about your book, Co-Parenting from the Inside Out. Before we get to that, though, I would love for our listeners to just get to know you a little bit. If there's anything that you're comfortable sharing, that would be great. Sure. Um, I, at this point, my sons, whom I co-parented with their father, are 31 and 34, which tells you I'm not a spring chicken. And I have studied a couple of different ways how people deal with change. One of them was getting a coaching certification from Integral Coaching Canada. And I have two master's degrees in psychology. And most of my career has been spent on helping people deal with change, whether it was with an organization or with individuals. So... I'm all about change. Yeah, which a lot of people aren't terribly fond of. (laughs) So um, that's a good thing to help people learn to deal with that. And of course, your your book is about co-parenting, which um, comes from a very profound change in the life of a family. So can you talk a little bit about the premise of the book? Sure. The idea of co-parenting was actually pretty foreign when... um, I and my ex-husband started looking at that. This was a good 25 years ago. Um, And I found that at that point there was nothing around about it. And I found the whole thing, I found the whole thing very hard and lonely for the first couple of years. And I didn't realize how lonely I felt until I ran across three pages in a book and the the woman who wrote it was talking about her experience of helping her grown sons take part in their dad's remarriage ceremony. And as you can imagine, she had all sorts of bittersweet mixed up feelings. You know, I'm proud. I'm sort of, mm, this is a little weird to be helping them. And it was a fantastic thing for me to read. It was the first time I felt like I wasn't alone in this very intense, mixed-up set of feelings. So I looked around. I thought, I want more stories like this, and there weren't any. So I decided that when my life permitted it, I would find them myself and write them up. And it took a while, but that's that's how this book came about because co-parenting seems to be increasingly common and it's important, I think, for people to have some ways to think about it and to get some perspective on their own situation. Because you're, when you're in this, it's, it's uh, so overwhelming, I think, for, for most of us at first. It's hard to kind of look up and say, okay, so how have other people done this? What have they thought and wondered, and how have they decided all these big things? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, one of the things that I, I appreciated a lot of things in your book, um, but one of the things that I liked from your story when you talked about the first, at least the first phase after you separated from your husband was just how honest you were. And you said, you know, I walked and cried and walked and cried. And, and, you know, you kind of went through this whole grief process as you tried to sort things through it. And, you know, people so often try to just put that brave face on it. No, I'm fine. And so it was really great to hear that you 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 weren't fine. You know, you were you were working through it as were the rest of your family. So I really appreciated that aspect of your story. Well, thank you. Um in fact, that's part of what I want people to consider is that the grieving process is so important. Um, you have to let go of this dream that we all entered our marriage with in order to move on to a different version of family. And and it's not easy for anyone. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a significant thing that you, if you try to sort of will your way through it, it probably won't work very well. Mm-hmm. So can you give your definition of co-parenting? Because I'm I'm sure everyone kind of has an idea of what they think it is. What is your definition that you went into this book with? Sure. The idea was to find people who both parents had at least 35% 
time involvement with their children. Um, in fact, a couple of, of stories I, 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 I accepted 30% because the story was so interesting. But the idea of 35% is coming out in research now as uh, enough to ensure that both parents have not just uh, one kind of time, you know, weekend time or weekday time, but both parents get a chance to help the kids, you know, get ready for school and take them to soccer practice or whatever, and they also have some hangout and have some fun time. And it's important, I think, because not only do the parents then get to sort of keep track of the, the children as they grow and change, but that the parents, uh, the children rather, the children get to know their parents in terms of both what their strengths are and what their flaws are. Excuse my interruption, but we do have to take our first break of the podcast. But when I come back, I will be speaking more with Karen about this book and about stories of parents who have had success in co-parenting. And when we come back, we'll be speaking about one certain instance where the parent was in Chicago and the child was in Kansas and how they made that work as a co-parenting situation. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Relationship Podcast, and we will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Karen L. Christensen on her book, Co-Parenting from the Inside Out. Let's go ahead and get right back to that interview. And there's one story in the book, and I apologize because off the top of my head, I can't remember the father's name, but it was one of those kind of different experiences that you mentioned. He actually... Uh, his child lived in Kansas and he moved to Chicago, but he was co-parenting because he would actually come to Kansas and, and volunteer in his son's classroom and really be involved more in the day-to-day as opposed to just when you have a child on one weekend a month or something and it's kind of about outings and, you know, that kind of situation, right? Oh, yes. And, and he put a lot of effort into making that work, those three-day weekends. And he he said he felt that volunteering in his son's classroom was a way to um, get to know his son a little differently because he'd see him interacting with his teacher and his friends and and be kind of part of his whole social environment. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about the research that went into this book, um, how you found the, the parents to interview, et cetera? Sure. Because I was doing this on my own, I chose not to try and get affiliated with an institution. The way I found people was mainly by word of mouth. I just started putting the word out to people I knew that this was what I was looking for. I got um, an article in a local paper, and that brought me about 10 people saying, okay, I sound like I'm the kind of person you're looking for. But really, it was quite serendipitous. And occasionally I'd see someone on the internet who was clearly involved in the same kind of work, and I'd get a few leads through there. But it was by gosh and by golly, and I ended up with 28 mums and 14 dads, although I looked pretty hard for more dads. I wasn't able to, uh, to find them through my, through my informal networks. One of the results of that um, was that while I think 42 is a pretty decent sample, it's not um, a scientifically representative sample mm-hmm. of, of anything. It's just people living across North America in a wide variety of circumstances. Right. And um, the, well, another thing that I appreciated about the book was the, uh, the way that you organized it in terms of um, 
there there's a variety of different kinds of families. So there's families that were dealing with um, maybe substance abuse or mental illness. There were families who were trying, who were co-parenting special needs children. There were families who were um, same sex couples who were also then trying to parent or co-parent, excuse me. So I really appreciated that. Uh, could talk about how you structured the book and why you chose to, you know, group the stories the way that you did. Beginning, I consciously looked for people in as many circumstances as I could and then kind of looked at, at what had turned up. And I did actually struggle for a while to figure out how to uh, structure the chapters so that people would easily find stories that they might be interested in. And the way it turned out, I guess, the, the high-conflict stories were very different from the stories of very cooperative couples. So that made sense. The um, parents with special needs children were so moving to me with the kinds of challenges that they were uh, grappling with that that seemed to make a a good chapter. And then it was a matter of of sorting out the others. The ones with the addictions, there weren't a lot of them, but I know that's a a significant factor for many people's lives. So it was just um, trying to kind of pull together factors that lots of people might be wondering, how do other people with this situation deal with it? Mm -hmm. And everyone, of course, deals with it differently because everyone's situations are different, which is a great thing about the book because you get so many different examples of different types of families. You talk in the beginning about um, self-management skills. Can you Mm -hmm. explain those a little bit? Sure. Because I'm a, a life coach, I'm always looking for patterns, and after about 10 interviews, I started to notice that the uh, qualities of how the parents approach their lives seemed to be the biggest thing on how many options they had and how successful they were in co-parenting. So I started to watch for uh, more detail on that, and I came up with five self-management skills. The first one is emotional awareness, and that's how well I understand my own feelings and how well I understand how my actions are impacting the feelings of the people around me. So that was a really big one. And the second really big one was ability to accept reality. And that's related to the the grieving thing we were talking about earlier, Sarah, because Mm -hmm. People who, even if they had to struggle, who were able to accept the reality that their marriage relationship was over, were then free to say, okay, so what do I need to do now to move forward in a way that I want to? Whereas the people who got stuck were kind of always looking back or feeling like, okay, this shouldn't have happened. This shouldn't have happened if only this had happened, or if I'd done this, or if they'd done that. And it was just like them dragging an anchor behind them, and they they really seemed unable to move forward. So ability to accept reality was the second big one. The other three, one is self-control, the ability to control your own actions so that you don't abuse other people, dependability, so that... If you and I are in a relationship, you generally can trust that I will do what I've said I'm going to do. It's not, it's not 100% for anyone. And the last one is taking others' needs into account. And that means that when I'm making decisions, that while I will very likely have my own needs in there, that I am able to take others' needs into account around me, particularly children. I call these self-management skills because I really believe that they can be learned and they can be improved on by all of us. Um, And I think in our own families, we all acquire a certain number of them. Um, And after that, it's kind of up to us, I think, if, if we're lacking in some of them to find a way to improve them. 
and that can be therapy or counseling or coaching, and that can be individual or group. It can be journaling. It can be looking at some really excellent books. But it doesn't happen, hmm, let's put it this way, I think we all learn from our experiences, but I think if we get some outside help, we're much more likely to learn a lot more. And co-parenting, of course, is not going to be the answer for every family. Do you have any guidelines or advice for a couple who is separating to kind of figure out if co-parenting is right for them? Well, that's a really good point, Sarah. If there is abuse, I would say if there's evidence of abuse or neglect, then co-parenting will not be a good idea because the safety of the children may be compromised. And I'd say if either parent has a question, then go talk to somebody, a professional who deals with families, and help get some help sorting out exactly what your concerns are before you go any further. Why did you and your ex-husband decide to co-parent? Hmm. Well, we had actually been going to marriage counseling before before we separated, and our therapist several times mentioned the word co-parenting. And I thought, hmm, okay, hadn't really thought of that as an option. And so I can't speak for my ex-husband, but for me, when I became more and more aware that the relationship was not salvageable, so something had to change, then I thought, okay, you know, what are our options? Um, I thought I would be a terrible single mother because I need time to myself, and I also knew that the boys loved their dad, and he was a good dad, and it seemed completely unfair to imagine not having uh, significant involvement there. So in spite of the fact that I was so sad and angry that things had not worked the way I wanted them to, if I had to find another option, co-parenting seemed like by far the best of, of the available options. And I am jumping in here with our second and final break of the podcast. I really appreciate Karen sharing her own experiences. It's always nice to hear not only the perspectives of the stories that are told in the book, but also knowing that the author has her own personal connection to this very important topic and that she's been through it. So she really is a voice of wisdom and experience. And I am so glad that she shared her experience with us. We're going to take that second break, and when we come back, we'll be concluding the interview with Karen Christensen. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Relationship Podcast, and we will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with author Karen L. Christensen about her book, Co-Parenting from the Inside Out. And what would you say to couples who are going through this process? Because, of course, it's 
a crazy time of emotional upheaval, no matter how um, civil or friendly a, a divorce can be, it's still going to be a huge time of change, which you deal mm-hmm. with as a life coach. How do you make this decision as rationally as possible? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, I would say things that have helped me would, would certainly were to write stuff down so I could kind of dump out some of what I was feeling and sort a bit. The second one was um, not only to get um, counseling, but also if you're, if you're talking to sort of friends and family about this, seek support from people that you believe will be a little bit detached, a little bit neutral. You don't want to go to talk to somebody who's going to kind of say, oh, yeah, oh, and they're such a jerk. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just not helpful to start um, building stronger walls than you already are feeling in your mind. So choose where you seek support. And even if it's difficult, just keep saying to yourself, okay, what what do the children need? What will be in their best interest? Yeah, thank you for that. That's very helpful. In your role as a life coach, um, you, you mentioned you're a certified life coach. How did that um, aspect of your work influence the way you wrote this book? Hmm. Probably the, the biggest way is that the coaching I do is very developmental. It's um, partly about helping people understand their situation from multiple perspectives and and understanding it more deeply. Um, The main thrust I have in my coaching is if people are stuck, then often they need to develop some new skills or improve some skills that will allow them to go where they want to go. So that developmental perspective really did inform everything. And when I kept hearing from co-parents that they had grown and that they felt so much more compassion and courage and confidence from the growth that they had experienced in in the course of their co-parenting struggles, I guess you could say, then that really, it resonated with me a lot and it gave me a sense of hope because these were pretty hard stories to hear, quite a few of them. Um, and that sense of growth and hope, and I suspect I listened for it, maybe because of my coaching approach, um, really made me that much more determined to get the stories out. Because I thought, okay, it's so daunting at the beginning of this process. And so I want people to understand that, especially at first, it can be really hard Uh, It mostly gets better, and there is this silver lining of growth that makes you not only um, a better person, but it makes you a better parent for your children. Because as parents, we can't teach our children anything that we haven't already learned ourselves. So stronger parents then lead to stronger children. Is there anything that you would change about the process if you were to do this again? Um, for instance, I, I know it's it's not something that you can always accomplish, but you weren't able to talk to often the, the partners, the other partner in a situation, or the children. So is there anything that you would do differently? Probably the the most curiosity I had would have been to find even more range of people. I would have liked to have found more dads. Um, I would have liked to have found some gay dads who were co-parenting to talk to because I I found lesbian moms and couldn't find any gay dads. Um, It certainly was interesting. I found four couples with whom I was able to talk to both, both parents, and it was fascinating to hear their different perspectives on the same events. So I would have loved to have done more of that. Um, But people were either open to it or they weren't. Right. And I'm not sure how how to do that. As for the children, um, 
my original hope was actually to interview a whole family constellation of people. And I would have loved to have done that. Um, and it just seemed difficult to find children who were at the right age that were old enough for me to interview and young enough that they hadn't sort of already moved on with their lives. Thank you for that. Your own children are grown now. Um, what do they think about the book in terms of their own um, their own experience, having been co-parented? Mm -hmm. Well, I showed them the chapter about my own experience a couple of times and and said to them, if there's anything in there that you're not comfortable with, then tell me and I will take it out. And, and neither of them did find anything. But that sort of, um, that gave me a sense that they were comfortable with, with what it contained. Um, other than that, I, I have to say they're pretty proud of their mom. Oh, good. For having written it. And, uh, and uh, my younger son has uh, had a number of friends. They came out to the book launch I did in Winnipeg and have been very, very supportive. So um, I think they think it's an important topic, and they're glad that I wrote it. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. That's lovely. Yeah. You also do some writing for, uh, according to your bio, for Divorce Magazine and the Huffington Post Canada. Um, what kind of writings do you do for them? They're, they're blog posts on things to do with co-parenting, you know, what makes it work better or things to pay attention to, and occasionally some broader things on parenting and personal growth, because those are my, my things. Right. Okay. And uh, would you, are you considering writing another book at any point? I... I'm aware that I've learned a ton of things. I mean, this book took me seven years to write. Oh, my goodness. Um, be, you know, including the research. So it seems like kind of a shame not to use that uh, in another book. And yet at the moment, I my attention is on getting the word out about this. Sure. Because it would be such a waste if people who are co-parenting don't hear about it. So... It's it's sort of a question mark for me at the moment, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> that makes absolute perfect sense. Uh, in terms of the book, where can people find it? They can find it in their favorite booksellers. Uh, Dundurn Press is the publisher, and they've got it in, you know, Barnes & Noble and all the all the big bookstores. And it's also on available online through... Amazon and other online publishers, so it's super easy to find. Awesome, thank you. How about you? Are you? Do you have a website? Um, do you have social media where people could find you? I sure do. I've got um, a Facebook page, Shared Parenting After Divorce. I'm on Twitter at Co-Parent Author, and I've got a coaching website called beyondlimitscoaching.com. Thank you for that. Um, so people can find you there. And is there information on the book um, on those sites as well? Um, yes, absolutely. I really appreciate how you included so many different perspectives, how you approach this in such um, an accessible way for people who are considering co-parenting. Is there anything that we have not covered that you would like to talk about in terms of this book? I love that question. Uh, yeah, a couple of things that co-parents reported that I think they learned. Uh, one was that no one regretted getting help. Mm. There were lots of regrets in the stories, but that wasn't one of them. So if you're wondering if you should reach out, probably you should. Right. Um, also, take time to make good decisions. The co-parents who sort of rushed into decisions, a number of them regretted. For instance, um, one mom went along with her husband's decision not to involve lawyers in their divorce, 
and she ended up not with the kind of time with her children that she had been seeking. She'd wanted 50-50, and she ended up with 25% for a while. So take the time and, and again, find some other perspectives, whether they're professional or not, to help you make good decisions. And I would say avoid drama if you can. The feelings are running so high that it's easy to do something to express your your feelings. In in my case, I didn't, but I came to consider making a placard uh, early on with some uncomplimentary things about <laughs> my then husband and marching up and down the city streets. I remember now, that in your story. <laughs> Yeah. Now that would have been a terrible idea. <laughs> right. And thankfully, my counselor discouraged me firmly and I listened to her. <laughs> but I'm a pretty low key person. Mm-hmm. And for me to consider doing that, um, it, it helps me understand how other people do do things that um, hurt or humiliate the other parent. Right. Because once you start on that swing, then it's really hard to stop it. Right. And and there was so, one story where the, the partner threw the, I think it was the wife who threw all of her husband's belongings out of the house, just chucked yeah. them all out. And yeah, that just t- tends to start um, retaliation and that can be a cycle that is very hard to quit. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, re- you remember that because once the drama really increases, then what happens is that the parents have less and less, I think, energy and attention to think about the children and what they need. And they're caught up in this kind of firestorm. So avoiding drama is is a really good idea. Well, and it's it's important not only for your own emotional health um, as a parent and a human and an adult, but also for modeling for your children. You know, you don't want them to see that and then grow up thinking that that's an acceptable way to handle conflict. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Now, there's one other thing. I actually have a WordPress site about my book. Okay. That is wordpress.com, Karen Christensen, dot WordPress. And I will put this information on our blog because your last name is spelled a little differently. I mean, it looks, yeah. it, when you see it, it looks just like Christensen, but it's not the way most people would probably automatically spell Christensen. So I'll make sure that I I include all of this information on the blog post. Again, thank you so much for taking time out of your Sunday to talk to me. I really appreciate it. It was great to hear from you. And um, thank you for putting this book out into the world. Oh, thank you very much, Sarah. I I love what you gleaned from reading the book. And I'm, I'm thrilled to have been part of this discussion. Oh, thank you. I want to once again thank my guest, life coach and author Karen Christensen, for taking the time out of her weekend to join me and talk about her book, Co-Parenting from the Inside Out. If you are in a situation where you're considering co-parenting, my heart goes out to you in whatever your situation is, but if you need some guidance, this book is great and gives you some really good perspectives. Maybe you know someone who isn't going through the process of a divorce or a breakup and they could use this book. Definitely check out uh, Karen's writings and check out this book if it's something that you think you or someone you know could benefit from because it's very well written. It's very engaging and warm and it it's just very helpful there's really no judgment in there it just presents options and ideas and gives you good starting places but at the same time it's not overwhelming you know there's a lot of information but it's not it doesn't feel like there's so much information that you can't possibly know where to start it kind of breaks things down so that you can get a handle on it because the last thing you need in an already trying and traumatic time in your life is just to have scads of information kind of thrown at you. So this book is really well done and I think is very helpful if you are considering co-parenting. 
Thank you again for joining me. Thank you to Karen for joining me. I hope you will join us again on Thursday. John will be back with another episode of the Relationship Podcast. In the meantime, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, any app that you use for your mobile device, and you can follow us on social media. We would love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Thank you again for joining us. Join John again on Thursday for his next episode. In the meantime, have a wonderful week, and I hope your relationships are strong and healthy. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.